Okay, welcome back. It's been it's been a while. It's not been a super while. It's like eight days since I uploaded the last video. And I think I hinted to you. Well, I didn't hint. I was actually quite clear that I sold my FX3. Also, I'm actually shooting on the Panasonic Glumix S52X. Uh, yeah. In order to get the uh, Panasonic Lumix S52X. So here's kind of like a video explaining why. And like I went from this. Yeah, I borrowed this one from Ruben. He's still on the uh, FX3. It's a fantastic camera. It can do 4K, 4K 120. No, it has good, good colors, good codecs. It, it's got a lot of nice things. And I mean, it's amazing in low light. So it's a fantastic camera. But what made me get this one? Uh, what made me get the uh, Lumix S52X was quite simple because obviously I'm a videographer first. That's my main objective. That's my main source of income. But I do keep getting people repeatedly asking me if I can take pictures at the same time. And don't get me wrong, the FX3 can take pictures. It can take 12 megapixel pictures, which is fine, depending on, on what you want to do with it. But a lot of the clients asking me, they want to have these images for print or for um, high resolution, so they can you know, crop in, do detailed retouch work and those kind of things. So the FX3 didn't really fit me in that workflow when needing to take pictures. Uh, one other thing with the FX3 is it is the cinema camera, as Sony is saying, but it still lacks shutter angle, which is a bit annoying sometimes when you do switch from, you know, 25 to 50 or even to 100. I rarely shoot in 100. I usually keep myself to 25 and 50, but you need to constantly remember the shutter speed, which is it's such a you know nitpicky thing, but if you forget it, you forget it, and that sucks. And trust me, I've done that quite a few times actually. Whereas on the Lumix S52X, and of course the uh, the Lumix, uh, the regular regular Lumix S52, also on the Lumix S51, you have shutter angle. You also have waveform monitors. You can also load in LUTs. You can do that on the FX3 as well, but. It's just a better all-around camera, and it's kind of created for video. And the Lumix S52X, now with the X1, not the S52, but the S52X, it also actually gives you the possibility to record ProRes straight in camera, or from the camera to a hard drive, which, you know, saves you a lot of time when editing, and sometimes people want it to live it in ProRes. So that's a few, you know, benefits of it all. And to be honest, I do love working with Vlog. As I said, I do have Sony FX6, which is a fantastic camera. It's S-Log free. The Vlog is fairly easy to match in DaVinci. And then my main big camera that I'm using is the uh, C500 Mark II, the one I'm filming on right now. And this camera also matches fantastically with the Lumix S52X and the S52 the vlog colors um so yeah that's kind of why i switched um also i don't think you need to to tell you know any videographer or any video geek twice that oh you want to buy something new oh no never of course we do we always want to buy something new in terms of which camera you should choose either as a you know beginner intermediate professional I'm not going to say like, ah, take this camera because it's better, but the Sony FX3, as we're speaking right now, is 4,699 euros, right, Ruben? 4,699, what's the, uh, yeah, yeah, I have Ruben in the office, he's over there. So that's 4,699 at the moment, whereas the Lumix S52X right now, it's got winter cashbacks, it's got some campaigns, so... This one right now is actually after cashback, 1,999 euros. So you can literally buy two of these and still it's cheaper than the FX3. Um, so what are the, uh, the cons? 
of the Lumix. And of course, with all cameras, there are, you know, quirks and cons and, and things like that. Uh, one of the cons historically with uh, the Lumix line is the autofocus. It's terrible, but when they released the S5 II, like the upgrade, they also released it with a face autofocus system, which makes it usable. It is not as sticky, it's not as good as the Sony autofocus. Let's just get that out of the way. So if you rely on autofocus all the time, the FX3 is a better choice. But if you need a good autofocus that you can rely on in 90% of the cases, and especially for like talking heads, interviews, uh, maybe not sport, you know, fast paced action, then I would definitely go with the uh, S52X. Right now I have the um, Sigma 24 to 70 lens as um, got recommended by uh, Luca Bono. You can find his channel in the description under and up here in a card. Super nice guy. He's a Lumix shooter by heart. I think he actually picked up uh, a second Lumix S5 on Black Friday. So I couldn't resist myself. But um, yeah, that lens is amazing and the autofocus in it, it's so quiet. Like I literally, I didn't hear it. Like I had to be super close to hear it and it's fast, it's sticky and it's really nice. So with the native L glass as it is on the, um, the Lumix, it is a really good autofocus. When I'm using an adapter and using my EF glass, then of course autofocus works, it's a bit slower, but that's kind of, you know, expected from an adapter, but it still works. So I can't complain at all about it. In terms of image quality, they are both great. Usability, they are both great. Gradeability, I would give that one to the Lumix because it gives a bit more, you know, pleasant skin tones. Whereas the uh, S-Log in the Sony kind of sometimes have a tint, but you know, all cameras have one kind of tint, it's just what you're used to. Um, memory cards, I actually like the, uh, the FX3 because you can put in a CF Express Type A, so it's a fast card. Whereas in the Lumix, you can actually only use um, regular SD cards, so it might not be a deal breaker, but for recording like the high quality progress, you need to do it straight to the hard drive because otherwise you, you can't get it on uh, the cars because it's a bit too slow. Um, price point we already talked about. Um, do you like shooting anamorphic or do you shoot a lot of content for you know social media? Then I would definitely give it to this one. Um, one thing I'd give the uh, Lumix though, it's got a 6K sensor. The FX3 has a 4K sensor, but the Lumix, you can actually utilize the entire sensor with something called open gaze. So that means you can shoot with the entire sensor, which is amazing for two things. One, if you shoot a lot of anamorphic, because then you shoot it like this and you kind of you know, squeeze the image and press it out. That means you have a lot more area to film on. So if you want to shoot with a 2x anamorphic, you can actually get a lot of real estate to work with. Whereas if you do it in the uh, FX3, a two times stretch is going to be a lot of things, you know, being removed on the top. It's going to crop a lot. Um, the other thing that I think is more important in today's society is if you shoot a lot of content for social media, like your clients want it in 9 by 16 story and they want it in 16 by 9 for a Facebook video or a YouTube video. If you shoot on the entire sensor that is like this, I'm looking in, you, you can crop in a completely different way. Whereas if you shoot like this, you kind of need to, to, to wiggle it around. So for repurposing content, it's an amazing camera and I think that everybody would love it. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of a, a quick rundown on, on these two cameras. One thing to be noted though, that is not setback, but kind of a thing I don't really appreciate with the Lumix is, is the slow motion. If you want to shoot in 50 frames per second, it actually crops in on the sensor. Whereas the, um, 
FX3 shoots with the entire sensor. So that, that's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, I don't really mind it because I don't choose, I don't shoot uh, that much um, in slow motion. I do do it sometimes, but not as much as I might used to when I was, you know, a bit younger. Then everything was in, you know, 120 and it looked cool. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that's it. And um, I mean, if you have any questions about the cameras or if you have any feedback or any input that I missed, you know, put it in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, the likes actually do make a huge difference with the algorithm and yeah, I mean, I'm super thankful for all you people watching this channel, uh, especially the ones commenting, you know, interacting with me. It's uh, still not a lot of people doing it, but I mean, we're getting there. Um, so yeah, thank you for this one and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, don't.